You know, at this point, I'm kind of running out of things to say in these intros, but we're back for another video because Halloween Horror Nights Universal Orlando has decided to gift us with another house announcement for this year's event. This marks the fourth house announcement in a row, and today, Thursday, May 23rd at 10.33 a.m., we got announced Monstros, the Monsters of Latin America. Now, for those who may be like, hey, that sounds familiar, this was actually a house featured at Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood last year. A very popular original concept from that event being carried over to Orlando's event for this year. But the similarities go beyond just the name itself. For that, we'll have to turn to the house description, which reads as follows. With La Muerte as your guide, you'll be begging for piedad from these three terrifying legends, Rahuel Pucci, La Lechuza, and El Sibon. And as I mentioned in the last announcement video, they do different descriptions from platform to platform. And according to Facebook, the house description reads, Ten cuidado, with La Muerte as your guide, you'll be asking for piedad from these three terrifying monsters, the blood-sucking Rahuel Pucci, owl-faced witch La Lechuza, and bone-ripping El Sibon. So yes, according to this house description, according to what we're seeing here, we're basically getting Orlando's version of the house that came to Hollywood last year, which is quite surprising. I'm not sure if this has ever been done before. We've seen Orlando originals reinterpreted by Hollywood before, but we've never seen it the other way around. And I'm gonna be honest, I thought they would do some different monsters considering they like to kind of separate themselves from Hollywood. Not in a bad way, they just like to do their own thing when it comes to the originals. But I don't think it's going to be a carbon copy of that Hollywood house. The last time something like this happened was when Hollywood tried their hand at an Orlando original with Scarecrow the Reaping in 2022. And with that house, they didn't just copy and paste the 2017 Orlando Haunted House, but they changed it and modified it to fit the Hollywood model. So I could see them doing the same thing here with Monstros, just the other way around. Also, I really love this new logo. It is quite different than the one we saw in Hollywood. Maybe we're getting a little bit of a different setting for this house than the cemetery we saw in the Hollywood version. Or maybe this is just a cosmetic change to differentiate it from that Hollywood house. I hope we get the same level of animatronics and costumes and things we saw in the Hollywood version, just even on a bigger scale because it's Orlando. While they could put this in a tent, I would really love this house to be in a soundstage where they could really go crazy with the monster designs and the scenic. I think this could be one of our more beautiful houses this year, considering, again, the one in Hollywood did such a great job with the sets and the costumes and the detail. And with the scares too, from everything I heard, this house last year in Hollywood was one of the scariest ones at that event. Now, for those who didn't get to see the Hollywood version, you're probably wondering who these characters are, who are we going to be encountering in this house? So I thought I would fill you in a little bit on the lore, the backstory behind them, so you're ready going into this haunted house. First off, the description mentions La Muerte. He's sort of the spirit of death, or I guess death itself. In the Hollywood version, you saw him in the beginning of the house and at the end, and you could hear his narration throughout. This is a lot like what you see Merlin do in Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate, so I would expect a similar thing to happen here here in Orlando. Oh god, this is gonna be a rough one. Tlahuel Pucci, there we go, got it right, not saying it again. This monster is almost like a shape-shifting vampire that feeds on infants. You're gonna hear babies crying, you heard that in the Hollywood version, you're probably gonna hear that here. Very unpredictable, very bird-like in design. La Lechuza is kinda similar, but more modeled off of an owl, so almost like an owl-like creature. Although she's more like a shape-shifting witch, we really only see her in her owl form within the Hollywood version, so I'm expecting we're gonna see something similar in the Orlando version. And Elsie Bone is probably the most interesting one in terms of backstory. Story goes, there is this boy who falls in love with a girl that the boy's father does not approve of. Dad catches them, dad murders the girl in front of the boy. Boy goes and, you know, kills his dad. The grandfather of the boy comes home, sees the whore, and then ties the boy to a post and pretty much whips him until he can't anymore. Once his body is mutilated, the boy goes into the woods and has to carry a sack of his father's bones around forever. The signature item from El Sibon, obviously other than his sack of bones that you do go into within the haunted house, is his whistle. So keep your ears open for a very distinctive whistle. That's how you know El Sibon is coming for you. I don't have a whole lot to break down here because we've already seen this play out in Hollywood with the different characters. We already kind of know what to expect. But I'm just hoping this does some different things, maybe bring some of the highlights from Hollywood, reinterpret those scenes that worked really well, as well as just add new scenes to make this version feel unique, feel like it stands out. 
I didn't get to visit that event last year, so I didn't get to see this house. So this will be my first time seeing a house with these different characters. But I think it should especially be interesting for those who did visit Hollywood to compare and contrast what did Orlando do better? What did Hollywood do better? I'm all for this. I'm all for them bringing different original ideas from both parks, mixing them together. It creates more of a synergy between the events outside of just having the big IPs that are shared. But anyways, that's just my opinion. What do you think about Monsteros the Monsters of Latin America being our next original for Halloween Horror Nights 33? Did you get to see the Hollywood version? What did you think of that house? Let me know all your thoughts about this announcement in the comments below. If you like videos about the history, lore, and so much more about Halloween Horror Nights and Universal in general, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. We've been growing a lot since they've dropped these crazy announcements. So I want to thank you for all the new subscribers as well as returning viewers tuning in to watch me break down these announcements. It seems like tomorrow is going to be the final announcement for a while, but at that point I think we'll have all six of our originals, which is absolutely insane. This week has been absolutely bonkers for Halloween Horror Nights and the whole community at large. So hopefully I'll see you tomorrow with another announcement video, the final announcement video for at least a little bit. But until then I want to thank you all for watching this video, be sure to stay spooky, and I'll see you all next time. Take care everybody.